the yeah. Chris Evans and CJ Micros. So uh, hopefully our tech team can do a swap. Yep. And hello there, Chris Evans of CJ. You have your half hour slot now, I believe. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just remember how to share screen. And do... Right. So you've seen my logo full screen? Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Um, well, we had a very interesting year, um, been very busy. Um, people have been busy, well, had more time for their hobbies. So, uh, uh, and a lot of our customers, it's hobbyist use. So we've been very busy um, selling stuff, uh, repairing stuff, and people having clear outs and giving us stuff, um, which is very nice. Um, so just go through a few things that um, I think are new since, certainly since Wakefield last year. Um, uh, we've got um, some reasonably priced uh, HDMI KVMs, because up until then we were looking at well over £100 um, for a two-port one, but we've now got two port at like £59, and um, where are we? Uh, and a four-port at uh, £89. Um, and then last month people may have spotted that um, we announced a new um, A7000 backplane. Um, now that, um, because they, they were, obviously Acorn made them, but they were very rare. We sort of like got hold of one uh, every other year sort of thing. But uh, so we decided we'd make a, a batch. Um, and you'll notice that there's a room on this one for a PCF8583B. And um, well, we'd always planned on putting the, an I squared C um, bus on it so that we could plug in one of our uh, real time clocks, uh, board, boards that we do for things like uh, A5000s and RISC BCs and that. But then someone on Stardot said, well, why not build it onto the actual PCB? So we're basically supplying it as standard. Um, with all the components buying the clock chip. We're actually going to fit a socket there. So you'll only just need to plug a chip in and attach the battery to uh, give you a real time clock because obviously A7000s suffer the same problem as RISC BCs in that the uh, real time clock from the CMOS battery is sold into the motherboard and often leaks and causes damage. Uh, it can be a bit of a pain to uh, replace because the leaking often then means that you try changing some of the components around the leaks and the pads just come off the board, um, things like that. So so we, we're doing, doing that. Um, and they, they start at sort of like the £49 or £69 with the uh, real-time clock fitted. And we've even got the proper... Um, you know, metal work um, for it that uh, we, we supply, uh, supply fitted. Um, and then what we've also recently been able to do is get hold of some that I eat in this one of the ZIDFS mini modules that um, we do. And yes, we can just, we just lost the Last sentence there, you had a bit of a problem on the microphone. If you could just say that again, please. Okay. Um, so this is one of the uh, mini partial ZIDFS is that we do, and we offer, normally we used to offer it with either an ID to compact flash adapter or an ID to uh, SD card adapter. Well, you could plug in a rotating drive, but hardly anyone ever uses those nowadays, we find. But uh, we found that we could get a suitable MSATA adapter and suitable MSATA cards. Um, and obviously MSATA is really more aimed at being used for as a drive rather than uh, compact flash or SD cards. So we're now able to do those. And, um, you know, the, the interfaces start at 
95 pounds and with the, the two gigabyte S as M SATA that's 159 and then we've got uh, ordinary podule it's a, well, it's a small short podule because there's, there's no point having a full size podule for these um, and you know the podules start at 89 but with the M SATA well, some people just go for a two gig because if they can be plugging into something like an A5000, there's no point in having it larger than that. Um, but we also can supply you know, well, all the way up to 128 gigabytes. Then also, users may deduce or spot that this is an A3020, and we found that we've got we managed to get some uh, uh, one gigabyte. Well, disk on modules with a 44 pin connector. So you just basically plug this straight onto the motherboard and it is your hard drive. So we've got a sort of those. It's only limited, but we've got a reasonable number to keep us going for, well, certainly several, several months on that. And then talking of actual full compute. Back uh, in at the London show, we, we launched the Raspberry Row. Um, four, um, and this is one of the cases that we're offering out in. Um, and the Raspberry Row 4, you know, nice Mi IPX case. Uh, the Pro includes the SSD drive, and uh, you know, it provides a nice, neat risk off um, experience. Um, you know, at a, at a low price, starting at you know, 249 pounds. Um, then a slight aside to something we've, we've not got actually anymore. Um, we never thought we'd say it, but we, uh, are, when Castle stopped selling computers, we bought a job lot of all their remaining odd stock, which included about two, two or three massive boxes of um, Econet modules suitable for A3020, 4000, um, BBC Master. Archimedes, um, those sort of things, um, but we have actually now sold every single one. Uh, we some we do have a few boxes here that we've still not opened after moving, but I'm pretty sure that's that's not good. we're not going to find any more of those. And um, something else that's well, it's on its last legs. We've sold over the last two three years nearly a thousand USB mice that don't have a scroll wheel. There was a particular US uh, Hewlett Packard um, mouse that didn't do uh, have a scroll wheel, but it's USB, but it's a three button. But we have just literally down to, I think, the last 20 out of about 1,000 of those. They are absolutely silly money at £69, I think, is the latest price each, but um, they still sell. It's uh, quite interesting. They, um, uh, the common uses seem to be either in CAD or in air traffic control. We've sell, sold, you know, sort of 2030 to various air traffic control units around the world, but uh, they 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 are no longer. But then back now to um, yes, it looks like it is the same case as uh, the Raspberry Road Four, but this is this is what the case that we're now also offering our uh, Rapido um, I Igin the iGet V5 based unit and the Rapido that's obviously gives you a really good uh, risk off experience I think it's the I think it's the cheapest um, uh, risk loss system with you know a fast SATA um, uh, drive um, connection in it um, I think is a correct statement but uh, now they start at 699 and then, of course, we uh, we have oh yes, we're getting low on stock on those, but we do have stock still at the moment of those, and can get more. Um, now, this though is this case we use for um, the Rapido Ti, where the, we put the titanium inside, but it needs a, a larger case than uh, the Rapido Ig. Um, but uh, where this is, um, you know, we supply it with. Uh, optical drive, um, obviously SSD, all the normal um, bits that you get, the, the full features. Um, it obviously offers the option of twin monitor output, 
which um, uh, so you get you gain that, but it obviously costs a bit more at sort of eight nine nine than the the Rapido Ig. But then something um, new, to, totally new. Well, we're announcing today. We've actually had them available for a couple of months, um, and that is. Raspberry Pi that wasn't made by the Raspberry Pi were our clocks. And um, we've sort of rather changed the design. So you, this is the one just um, being plugged in on a Pi 4. Uh, I've been told my network was slow there. Am I, am I okay still? Have you, have you lost me? Uh, I hear fine. you there. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, I'll carry on. I got a screen popped up saying you had an unreliable internet connection or something like that. But anyway, right. So we've moved basically the battery to the top of the board rather than underneath to provide clearance for um, heat sinks. Um, because obviously the later uh, Raspberry Pis really could benefit from a heat sink. Um, now, at the same time, we've also um, added an extra connection um, to, uh, to our board, which allows you to do this. So this is the board fitted into an official case with the official case's fan, um, all plugged in and uh, merrily working. And thanks very much to Chris Johnson up in Edinburgh. He's modified um, CPU clock, so it will automatically cut the fan in and out as and when the temperature um, um, you know, sort of requires it. So um, we, and we have those in stock. I'm hope, actually, I realize I really need to order some more cases and fans so that we can supply complete solution, but we've got very good stocks of the actual clock module itself. Um, we don't normally actually fit the pins for the fan um, in the standard version, but uh, we get, we will be offering it with the pins for I know, a pound more. It'll be just a nominal sum amount extra. Um, then going back to the retro market, um, you may spot that that is a nine pin mini bin. Now, one of the things on the uh, Acorn mice that causes them to stop working is, you know, when the cables break down, because obviously they're just bits of metal being bent back and forward, back and forward. So in time, they will eventually break. Now, we've been trying to uh, get hold of suitable um, uh, cable, well, sort of suitable cables. Um, and we eventually found people that would make us some, uh, some do the wiring at the mini bin end, which we certainly decided we didn't uh, have the expertise to do that reliably. Um, but the, we had a great problem was trying to find suitable cable that is you know, nice and flexible. Um, RS actually sell a cable that's very similar to what you'll see there, but it's thicker and much, much stiffer. But we have managed to find, get hold of a batch of these cables. So we um, will be making them available, um, wired up suitably for all um, uh, mice that were done on the Acorn. Well, I believe Watford actually is a mouse. I'm not sure what connector it had on the other end. But um, this one here is, this one is, Uh, and this this cable from the uh, CTC mouse, the CTA Ergo mouse, um, and then this one is uh, with a 10-way JSV that is used on the later Logitech mice, like most of the mouse that got or the mice that came with um, RISC PC. They use that. We will the earlier Acorn mice, which use 0.1 inch connectors, we will uh, be providing um, those um, <clears throat> uh, as well. Um, 
now. The uh, and we're also um, going to be hopefully doing a number of mice where we will actually have um, fitted the new cable to and fitted new um, micro switches to the buttons so that they do the job um, and offering a refurbishing service um, where possible. Um, right now, the next thing is um, photo desk. Now, every show, some people say to us, you know, what's the latest with Photodesk is the new version. Now, um, to be honest, it, the development's rather stalled over the last few years, and my apologies for that. Myself and the main developer have been rather preoccupied with other things. But I'm very pleased to announce that today that, to announce today that Paul Roivers of Example Technology has now taken over all aspects um, of Photodesk development, um, of Photodesk development, sales, and marketing. And uh, example, they'll be making an announcement shortly themselves, I believe. But uh, very glad that uh, you know it's going to carry on, and um, that uh, looks very good for the future. There. Other products that are imminent is that um, we we are very occasionally have been getting uh, obtaining secondhand uh, BBC B and BBC Master monitor stands, and we 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 put them up you know, on our website and up on eBay, and they normally sell almost straight away at quite silly money. So we've realised that um, you know there is a market out there. Um, been a bit, we, we think we've now found a suitable source because at one point it looked like we were going to be being charged you know, £40 cost price, which would have made it uneconomic to sell on. But hopefully, we can, uh, we've now found a source using, and we'll use a design rather like this one here. But um, I'm hoping that uh, they will be available next, uh, next month um, on that. Um, other things that um, just for trying to remind myself what the next uh, um, slide is. Oh, no, that is the end. Right, so I'll stop share, uh, uh, sharing and I'll mention a couple of some other things. Uh, oops, so easy. Where's my oops. Oh, cancel work. Minimize that. Right. So I should be back um, now on camera. Um, right. One of the other things we're hoping to do, and oh, I had hoped to be a test it, have running now, but uh, one or two things didn't turn up that I wanted or needed adapters that I didn't have, was basically some routers um, that would allow you to um, connect via 4G. Um, because nowadays so many of us really rely on the internet so much that if our ADSL goes on or DSL goes down, what do you do? But there are routers available that will actually fall over to um, 4G. So um, I'm going to be testing it one for our own purposes and once we found a good decent range of that, we'll be making those available. Um, because like I, I've got at least one customer who wants one, but because he but he doesn't actually have a phone line, so he will be using just the, his 4G. Uh, when I was talking to another user, who his internet it connection, he only gets on the internet when he goes into the library. So he's been rather bereft for quite a few months, but um, uh, hopefully he might be interested in one of those as well. Now, I was going to say that we're working um, on another project, a risk cost 5 related project that would, uh, you know, risk cost 5 new hardware that would have a unique feature. But uh, Andrew's just um, earlier on this morning um, in, now it's in announcing his Pi ITX um, has sort of a, means it won't be totally unique because his, his is going to have the same unique feature um, 
in having the main unit being upgradable. Um, we're not able at the moment to show any designs, um, but um, we're hoping that uh, things will progress rel relatively quickly at the moment. Um, and the great thing is, yes, again, we're not just doing it on a, uh, we're not, it's not our project just for us and for RISCOS. Um, it is something that uh, um, other people are involved in. So uh, it, the, the, the costs um, are going to be shared, an actual fact. Uh, it's, it will go ahead, they will be going ahead without um, our involvement or with our involvement, so as far as I can gather. But uh, something that's something to look forward to, because uh, hopefully there then the uh, high commute compute module five would be able to be dropped in. This obviously um, is dependent on um, the relevant 32-bit mode being available on that. But uh, it's something that uh, sounds like it is a possibility, maybe even a probability. But uh, not certain. Um, the other thing is, um, before I come on to questions, as I, yeah, let's see, I have a little bit of time left. Um, just mention, explain a little bit how um, Brexit has, uh, has affected us. Um, knew that it was going to involve, you know, quite a lot of our sales are into Europe and um, around the world. Um, now, around the world, you'd think it wouldn't make a difference or very little difference, but it certainly does seem that there are one or two more problems dealing with that our customers are coming, have it coming up against uh, regarding importing. Now, whether it's because it, we're no, they're no longer importing from the EU, I don't know, but uh, there have been one or two problems. And certainly to EU countries, um, there's two boxes that are sitting in our hallway here at the moment. They have been to Germany and back to us, and then been to Germany and, back, and arrived back to us on Thursday again, um, because the relevant people are not managing to communicate with the, uh, the end user to pay the duties that now are becoming available. We certainly had some rather upset customers who said, but why should I have to pay duty um, and VAT? But uh, that unfortunately, of course, is what happens when you import from outside the EU. Um, one of the aspects that, um, well, it may affect uh, some of the listeners um, is that uh, if you, uh, it's always been the case, if you import from outside the EU um, a parcel, then you would, a small parcel coming by post, you would get a, a, a card from the post office saying, oh, you've got a parcel, there is a VAT duty um, to pay. Now, the, du the VAT, 20%, um, often there's no duty to pay, or it's like 2 or 3%. Um, but the thing is, they then also say, oh, here is our £8.50 handling charge. So on a small item that, say, costs £10, it can very quickly become over twenty pounds, um, and quite a few of our sales to Europe have been um, of you know things like ten pounds specialist cables, you know, uh, mini sorry micro USB extension cables with a switch in it, um, and so users in um, in Europe now have that hurdle to to cross. Um, Sorry, going back to the UK importing, if you're importing something that used to be anything under, I think it was £15, you didn't get to uh, charge VAT and handling fee, but that um, £15 uh, lower limit has now basically dropped to zero. So anything you import, um, even a gift, um, will be charged on VAT. I think there's special things about gifts. Um, under thirty-five pounds, don't assert, don't get um, duty, but uh, that's uh, different. Now, one of the other things that we have to do is um, so we every time we now send anything to Europe or Europe, we now have to fill in the CN22, 
or customs documents, and we're now sort of often insisting the couriers that we insist um, on putting in the tariff number of the item that we're sending so that they can apply the appropriate duty. Now, I don't expect many of you realize that nearly all the computer equipment they've ever bought comes under a tariff code where the main heading of it is nuclear reactors, boilers, machinery, and mechanical appliances and parts thereof. But um, it's, it's a nightmare having to find those out because there are lookup things to tell you, you the result. Uh, you, so, but if you type in things like monitor, computer monitor cable, it says, no, don't understand that. It comes under, I forget now, but some weird and wonderful display devices, parts thereof. But yes, all under the nuclear reactors, boilers, machinery, and mechanical appliances section. Um, so, no, and the other thing is, of course, is all our sales to Europe, um, all the 4D sales, there's the sales for secondhand items and that, uh, because 4D isn't VAT registered, so it bumps the price up for EU buyers by 20%, and they have all the hassle as well. So, yep, I quite agree with Vince had it, had it in the, in the uh, comment section there. Um, yes, uh, I will say no more um, on what I voted for regarding Brexit. Um, right, I think that's pretty well covered um, uh, what I want to say, apart from that. Yes, having listened to um, the, all the other talks um, so far, um, risk loss really seems to be uh, going very well, and I'm very pleased with how things are going generally. But uh, any questions? Yeah, I think we've just got a, a couple of minutes for any questions. Uh, I've got one for you. Um, I don't know if I missed it. Uh, prices of the mouse cables, were they? Oh, um, actually, yes, I've realised that in some of the things I've talked about there, I haven't actually got round to actually putting them on the website yet. All oh, right, okay. Uh, house cables, I knew I hadn't, because literally it was only Wednesday did we actually actually wire so, one up and have it working um, on yeah. the Logitech mice. Um, basically, um, yeah, I won't, I'm not going to commit quite at the moment, because I, I hate to say one That's fine. I don't yeah. have a higher one, but yeah. um, it's... Uh, you know, I will be getting that up there and hopefully making an announcement certainly ne next week um, uh, um, for that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, I re realise you haven't given a prize for those and that was nearly everything else. Yeah, no, no, yeah. good point. We'll, we'll have a look next week then. Thanks. Uh, Chris, a quick question. Um, any chance that in the future we're going to have uh, more device like the... Uh, PC, what's, what's called the PC encoder, so that we can actually use regular keyboard with, with retro hardware, like the Archimedes or D5000, etc. Right, yeah. Um, yes, I, I think you tried buying the one we said we had in stock, but uh, when we went to buy it, we got it was on the website, but when we looked on the shelf, it wasn't there. Sorry about that, Paolo. No um, right, I, well, as soon as I can find some time, I recall that some years ago the people that did make one um, did uh, muttered something about either they may have some some old stock or some boards left or they could make some more or I, I can't remember but I, it was certainly the they seemed to indicate there's a possibility of more one way or t'other but uh, I've got to try and contact them uh, and uh, ask that uh, question again um, because that's obviously yes it is because the older keyboards that that you know the Archimedes and A5000 keyboards that that it basically um, is is used to replace because those keyboards are getting rather old and they are basically once dust gets into the key switches it's a nightmare because you well apart from the fact they're held together with about 40 screws if not more um, it's uh, as soon as you try screwing it back together, they you know, you, some of the plastic posts that they screw into split, and they have the, has the side effect of the keys that are right next to them 
won't work anymore. It's physically jammed. So no, that is something that's on my to-do list. In actual fact that we have oh, two or three other things, projects that we would love to do as soon as we can find time. One of the reasons why I'm surprised uh, Andrew has, uh, uh, Rawnsley has managed to do so much because, um, we, you know, I'm finding I'm still working on, I'm, I'm now sort of, well, officially going to be able to get my pension later this uh, in a couple of months' time, but um, I'm now working, I think, more hours than I've ever done. Um, and just, you know, so many things that have been put off. But anyway, I hope to get back to that one, Farley. Not too long, decent. No worries. Uh, also could be helpful, just as a thing, to actually have the documentation about the original uh, Archimedes uh, port. We could use a, an Arduino and just, uh, you, you know, one side USB and the other side uh, transform it into whatever the Archimedes wants. Because it's not PS2. It is a PS2 port, but it's not PS2 signals. No. Um, I don't know quite how much information is in the in one of the TRMs. I, I know there were circuit diagrams, but I'm not trying to think, did they? There was, yes, I'm pretty sure there was only 5,000 TRM. Um, but quite sort of what de how much detail it went into on the keyboard interface, I don't know. Okay, I think we're going to have to uh, call a halt to it oh. here.